What's up, you guys? Welcome back into iHeartRadio's official wrestling podcast, the Battleground Podcast. It is Battle from Rock 106.7. And of course, AEW is making their return to Salt Lake City, AEW Dynamite and Rampage at the Maverick Center, which, by the way, you can still grab tickets, alleliterestling.com. And on the show today, we got a, uh, we call this guy a friend because we are friends. A friend of the show is back. Give it up for Mark Briscoe, everybody. Mark, how are you, sir? What's going on, man? What's going on? Good to be here once again. Man, it's 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 always a party when when the Briscoes come on the show. And uh, man, let's let's just jump right into it. Everybody's talking about this Wednesday nights. You, Chris Jericho, the Learning Tree, uh, in a ladder war match for your Ring of Honor Heavyweight Championship. How are you feeling mentally preparing for this kind of match? Man, honestly, man, like it's just this is really like it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone far enough, man. It's gone on long enough because this is, you know, man, this is bullshit, man. Like Jericho, like he he I don't know if he just thinks he gets a free pass to 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 do to say whatever he wants. It, but man, like, dude, like do you want to get hurt, man? Like, like, like your life is gonna be in my hands, like and like just for this man to not have the self-control or even maybe if he does have that self-control, but he voluntarily chooses to continue, man, to, 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 to bring up my brother's name. When I tell him, man, like, like keep my brother's name out your mouth. Like it, like, man, you really going to get yourself hurt. You understand? Like, I hope you're ready for retirement, man. I hope you're ready for that. I hope you prepared because it's ain't like, this ain't going to go good for you, man. Like, like you don't understand, like, like I'm not the one. I'm not the one. I, we, uh, like you made a career of being a a a, a smart ass, a cynical, uh, 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 sarcastic uh, dude, and, and it's gone good in other uh, at other times, in other avenues, in other aspects, in, in in things that you've done in wrestling. But man, don't don't like no, like not with me, not right now, not talking, man. Don't like I said, like, hey. All I'm saying is anybody who is would like to see Chris Jericho legitimately get his ass whooped and legitimately, I mean, this might be it for Chris Jericho. He, he's had a hell of a career, hell of a career. I'm not, I'm not doubting that. I'm not trying to act like that's not the case whatsoever. And hey, hey, this damn well might be it, man. This might be it because I'm tired of it, man. I'm tired of it. Like, seriously, like it ain't, it ain't funny, man. It, it ain't, it's not games, dude. It's not. Absolutely. And and the thing is, is you look at, at your history when it comes to matches, you look at Jericho's history of matches. I think you've been in more, way more aggressive, way more extreme matches than Jericho's been in. Man, see, that's what, I mean, me and my brother, that's what we, that's what we came up on. We were like, as we was, when we were, when we were children, when we were, small children, you know, four, five, six years old, we was Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan and, and Ultimate Warrior all day long. But right about it, the first time that we ever got a glimpse at the original ECW, not WW, WWF style ECW, I'm talking about ECW in Philly at the ECW Arena back in the mid-90s, man, that's when we fell in love with professional wrestling. That's when it was rather than just being, oh, yeah, wrestling's cool. You want to watch wrestling? Oh, you know, that's when it was like, all right, we now know what we are destined to do on the planet Earth, and that's to be professional wrestlers and to go out here and get down like these wild dudes in this bingo hall in South Philly, Pennsylvania, man. And so we that's what we've been doing our whole career. That's what we've been been focused on, like the, the violence. That's the... Like Jericho, you a wonderful sports entertainer. You also a good professional wrestler, but you can't get down the way that them boys can get down. And you, it, man, <laughs> it's just it's just not a good idea, man. It's just not a good idea to 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 to. It's like signing your own death warrant. You know what I mean? It's it's barking up the wrong tree. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's uh, this is this is right up my wheelhouse. I'm, I'm like, I got the opposite of the opposite of nerves. It's like. I'm so ready and I'm so prepared that, man, I just don't, I don't know how long I'm going to want to just punish this man before I go grab my title. 
that's kind yeah. of my only debate in my head is how long do I punish this man? Because it's not, it's not, you know, I just, I just feel sorry for him. He's had such a wonderful career and, you know, but Hey, you know, to go out in a blaze of blood and glory against one half of the baddest tag team that ever has been, Hey, it could be worse. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, tomorrow night we're going to see uh, Chris Jericho's career ended by Mark Briscoe, AEW Dynamite and Rampage over there at the Maverick Center. Uh, you can still grab tickets, all elite wrestling.com. And, you know, a lot of people have seen this show. We've had you and your brother on multiple times, and you've had a legendary career with your brother. But now you're making big moves in the single division, you're making a name for yourself now. What does it mean to you personally to carry that Briscoe legacy forward in this new chapter of your career? Man, it's like it's like such an honor, dude, because it's like, you know, me and Jay, we were it's funny because when we was getting into wrestling, you know, it all started in the backyard. We we it was me versus him on a trampoline until we wore out the trampoline and went through the trampoline uh canvas and then we built a platform of wood on top of the trampoline frame put up four posts and some, some cable and some garden hose. And so then we had a ring, but it was always me versus him. So it was like, we was always singles guys, you know, <laughs> coming in at the very, very beginning. And it was funny. Like, of course, logically, you know, anybody and now looking back hindsight, of course they were going to put us in a tag team. But when we start training, up at Russell Tech in Wilmington, Delaware. And then they're like, okay, so uh, we think we're going to call you guys the Briscoe Brothers 2000. You remind us of Jack, <laughs> Jack and Jerry Briscoe. You guys got the same something about you. Just reminds me of Jack and Jerry Briscoe. We're going to call you the Briscoe Brothers 2000. And, that, and that's the first time I thought, oh, oh, we're going to be a tag team? <laughs> and then the rest is history. You know what I mean? Right. It's like – it's one of the things where just take, can't see the forest because all the trees are in the way type thing. Like, duh, we're going to be a tag team. And then it's like we go on to have 20, you know what I mean, 22 years, 23-year career of, uh, you know what I mean, all over the world, all kinds of matches, all kinds of opponents, all kinds of venues, you know. And it's just like uh, it really is. It's an honor to be able to carry on the Briscoe legacy uh, as a singles guy, even though that was never – you know, since since the backyard days, that's not been my bread and butter. But now it's like, uh, oh, yeah, I remember how to do this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, and, and, it, and it's good to see, you know, right now everything that's going for you. I mean, it's great that uh, you've got that uh, ROH championship around your waist. I, and as, as a belt guy, because, you know, we always love to collect belts. I uh, I did pop Mark out, as the kids say, a little bit when, uh, you know, you debuted your custom belt, the uh, the white camouflage strap. Absolutely loved it. Um, yes, so, what? Well, I'm you know, sorry, man. I just had to make a quick, quick little move. I heard some little feet running. And I think we're about to get uh, yeah, well, about to have a surprise run in in a second. Okay, never mind. We're good. Let me get back to my. <laughs> let me get back to my battle station. <laughs> had a, almost had a surprise run in for a second there. I was gonna say, man. The other day I was talking to somebody, and next thing you know, Big Murph come barreling in, and so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so we talked about Big Murph for about 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. That's great, man. And, you know, uh, a lot of people have been talking about this run that you're on with Ring of Honor. You've got the World Heavyweight Championship. You've made it your own like your brother did with his Ring of Honor Championship, which is awesome. Um, you know, with, with recent spotlight on wrestlers becoming top names in both AEW and ROH, who do you see as that next like breakout star in ROH that fans should be really keeping their eyes on? Um, well, I mean, if you're talking about in ROH, uh, I, I, give me a second to ponder that one, but I just want to take this time to put over one of, if not the best professional wrestler in in the world, top five in my book anyway, and that is Athena. The the I mean, the way that she has uh, has carried this uh carried this ring of honor woman's title and i mean just whenever you know the decision is made to get her on AEW she's going to take over man she's uh she's just so complete and so good 
as a performer and as a wrestler. So, uh, but as far as breakout star in, I mean, in Ring of Honor, I mean, man, that's that's a tough question because there's so much young talent. There's so much, uh, so much young, hungry talent. I mean, uh, dang on, man, you put me on the spot there. <laughs> it's a, uh, I mean, shoot, I, and I'm trying to think here about guys who are, who are exclusive and who haven't really crossed over to AEW too much. But I mean, like a guy. A couple months ago, I, I wrestled, and he's, he's I'd say he's probably considered an AEW guy by now, but guy that I wrestled for the title, for the Ring of Honor title on Honor Club a couple months ago because he pinned me on Dynamite was Kyle Fletcher. Kyle Fletcher is 100% a blue chip five-star prospect, and he's uh he's just starting to really make waves and to really just show what he can do. So, uh, man, keep an eye on Fletcher for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That that's one, especially now that he's turned on Osprey and he's yep. kind of aligned himself with Don Callis. I could see him slowly uh, easing up the ranks in that that ROH division. I know that uh, he was television championship for a while. <laughs> We're just having so. I'm telling you, it is a party when we have Mark on the show. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's just the energy, baby. The, the reverberations in the air. Okay. It definitely is. Now, I, I got to talk about this because, you know, a lot of people have been talking about this match again. We we briefly talked about it tomorrow night. Uh, you, Chris Jericho, as someone who's, uh, you know, been in a lot of brutal matches your whole career, do you think that there's anything that Jericho can throw at you that you haven't already faced? Man, Other than he's no. got numbers behind you, but you've got the, the fans behind you. Yeah, and honestly, I I know I I don't think so. I don't think that this man like legitimately stands a, a, a he he don't got a snowball's chance, in you know what I mean in the oven, mm-hmm. you know what I mean on on, on preheated on four twenty five for a half hour, you know what I mean he ain't got a snowball's chance, man. I'm telling you, he's a hell of a professional wrestler, had a hell of a career. He's had some good damn ladder matches. I remember you know some of the best ladder matches I've seen. One of the best ladder matches that I've ever seen. Chris Jericho was part of that match. But uh, that was, man, it's a ladder match. This is a ladder war. Like, I've seen, I had this old boy. I was up at the, man, I was over at the, the old boy was shelling beans out there on the side of the road. My good buddy, Baba Hotwell. And I uh, come by and I see him and I just poked in the, poked my head out to say hi to him. And uh, Bob said, what's the, so you got a ladder? You got a ladder match coming up on Wednesday? What is a ladder war? What's the difference between a ladder match and a ladder war? I said that is exactly what it's called. It's a, it's a it's not false advertisement, it's a war. This is, I mean, it's to be expected. A ladder match, the the goal of the match is to climb, climb the climb the ladder and get the title or the briefcase, whatever may be hanging. That's a ladder match. A ladder war is first. You go to war and you incapacitate this other dude across from the ring from you. And then when the time is right, if I don't feel like putting no more punishment on this man, then I'll go get the item hanging from the ceiling. But this is, man, that's the thing. This is a war, man. Like, like they used to have those TLC tables, ladders, and chairs. That's kind of kind of what a ladder war is. It's more than just a ladder match. It's a war. It's going to be, man, it, it's a, uh, yeah. But that being said, to answer your question, no. Jericho ain't got nothing for me. I'm ready in, in, in anything. I'm already. I'm. I've been two steps ahead of, ahead of him the the whole time. He been he been he been fooling with me. I already. I, I I got his number, man. I got his number, and he can't bring the violence. He's got he's got experience, but I got experience too. Now, I mean, that being said, he just he, he's uh he don't know what he's getting into. He don't know what he's getting into, and uh, in, in a way, I feel sorry for the man. I think I think a lot of people are uh, kind of feeling sorry for uh, for Jericho for tomorrow night because uh, I mean he's he's gonna get those hands from you. I don't think he knows what he's getting ready uh, to step into, and it, it's gonna be uh, pretty gnarly tomorrow night. AEW Dynamite is in Salt Lake at the Maverick Center. Uh, you can still grab tickets all elite wrestling dot com. Uh, before we let you go, because I know your time is busy being the champ and all that. Uh, wrestling fans, of course, have seen you in some of the most craziest, most intense matches ever uh is there one match or moment that still gives you goosebumps when you think back on it and how does that compare to uh you know tomorrow night's match that you're getting ready for 
Man, that definitely is uh plenty of matches and moments. I mean, the 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 first thing I would think that a lot of people would 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 obviously would have guessed would be uh you know having the matches uh had we had the trilogy with with FTR to end up with that dog collar match. That dog collar match was just something that was just in in, in my mind that would just always be uh uh just a a moment in time that'll just never be uh just. There, there will never be another feeling like that, no matter how great of a victory I could have moving forward. It's just like that was, and I've said it before, it was like after the match, once Jamin choked out Dax, and, and then a new Ring of Honor world champion, and then I turned and he he gave me this big hug, this big bear hug. It was, I mean, it's just nothing will ever compare to that, man. But, I mean, throughout the career, there's the, uh, like, I think about how, how much people, people will talk about in, uh, you know, uh, put over the the matches with FTR. The, we had the three matches with him that'll never be anything like it in my career. And you know, it was just, to me, it was just a real special uh, trilogy of matches. But I mean, like, man, you think about what the Briscoes and the Young Bucks. Man, we wrestled. We ain't wrestled three times. We probably wrestled thirty times or forty times. It was like Rock and Roll Express. Or, uh, excuse me, Rock and Rolls in the Midnight's. Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express. We man, we wrestled. It, Tokyo, we wrestled Australia, we wrestled in, in London, we wrestled up and down America. I mean, the stuff that we got to do with the Young Bucks, that was also, I mean, just something that's a such a fond memory and just such a, a pivotal uh, part, of, part of our careers. And I mean, so many other teams, so many other teams, I don't want to start listing because I don't want to leave nobody out. But uh, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, Kevin Steen, El Generico, there's one more name drop for you. We had a uh, we had a series of matches with Kevin Steen and El Generico, which ended up in uh, the first ladder war, actually, and, and that's something that I'll never never forget, and I think never duplicate. You know, that'll be something that'll always have that special place in in my life and in my memories, and just in professional wrestling in general. I think the history of pro wrestling. Uh, I think the. Steven Generico matches and uh yep and we had this one random match with Madman Pondo and Necro Butcher and down in Florida. There was a barroom brawl and that was a that was a doozy there. That was a heck of a doozy. <laughs> yep, you know, but uh yeah, I, that's probably about uh those are the main things that come to mind. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, we 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 don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you got to get ready for the uh, the ass whooping that you're going to give Jericho tomorrow night. Uh, yep. AEW Dynamite. You can still grab tickets. It's at the Maverick Center, AllEliteWrestling.com. Uh, Mark, before we let you go, man, anything you want to say to people that are watching or listening to this right now? Hey, just, just want to spread the love, baby. Just want to spread the love, people. You know, there's different wrestling promotions on this planet, but you know what? Wrestling is good no matter where you ingest your wrestling, no matter where you uh, get your wrestling from. And there's just it, people that's, that's just on that, on that, just on that haterade, man. Some people that just like, just can't, they're blinded by, oh, I like this promotion, so I can't get down with anything that has to do with this promotion or vice versa, or I don't know, man. It's just like, they know, they ain't no, how y'all got time for that? How y'all got time to be really worried about stressing about uh, uh, your favorite wrestling promotion or your favorite wrestler and really get upset? You really your blood pressure. Some people's blood pressure really gets quite elevated, and that's not healthy, man. Y'all y'all don't want to die at a young age because you're worried about the other wrestling promotion that you just so worried about bashing. Like, man, just enjoy wrestling. So that's I mean the. The first thing I'm gonna say is, if you like wrestling, then just enjoy wrestling. If it's something you don't like, guess what? Don't watch it. You know that'd be probably be the best uh, best solution. Inside of that, just want to tell everybody out there that God loves you, I love you, and I hope that y'all's having a wonderful day.